2020, my friends, is proving to be a year like no other across all industries and definitely impacting our local real estate markets right here in Los Angeles on the west side. Unfortunately, we don't have any markets really to pull any wisdom from in the past, and the only market that's very similar to what we're experiencing right now was the recession of 2008, which I don't think many will agree that we're quite there yet, but we are seeing very similar patterns with a skyrocketing inventory compared to this last year. Also looking at a complete drop-off of buyer demand and sales. This is not only impacting the real estate market, it's also impacting the way that we're doing business. This pandemic is completely like unlike the recession that we saw because agents in the recession still could perform as agents, whereas right now in this pandemic with all the restrictions staying at home, six feet difference, we can't even function like we once were. Can't door knock, can't hold open houses, can't take clients out. Most of the time the showings that you can do are at homes that are completely vacant as well. So normal way of doing business is completely off the table and lenders and mortgage brokers are seeing it as well. They're having buyers who live in nominal on paper, ready to go, have a program set, all of a sudden unemployment hits, the buyer loses their job, or the stock market, they've lost their down payment, or the program simply no longer exists. So on that note, I knew that I needed to create a video, keep buyers dialed in on what to expect, how to get dialed in, tips to be using, and also helpful money hacks to be employing during this process of going through the first steps of buying a home, which is not going to realtor.com and zillow.com. It's going and talking to that mortgage broker and getting pre-approved. So keep it dialed in here because I'm gonna take you through the steps of what you need to be aware of with everything that's involved in getting pre-approved. <laughs> What's up, what's up guys? It's Eric Haas with EXP in sunny Southern California out of Los Angeles on the west side. Hope you guys are doing great. Welcome to my channel. If you happen to be joining me for the first time, super stoked to have you with me here today. If you haven't already, please my friends, hit that like button, smash that subscription button, and leave a comment or concern below because I love addressing questions and helping you out because that's what I'm here for. Plus it keeps me motivated to keep delivering valuable content to you guys and also lets YouTube know that I'm doing a great job at it as well. So without further ado, let's keep you dialed in on how this pandemic is not only impacting your local lives and our housing market but also tips tricks and strategies you as a buyer seller agent can be using to stay successful in this market or any market for that matter alrighty guys getting pre-approved so I know so many of you out there are probably thinking like yeah I kind of know what that is you know my agent filled me in a little bit but I feel all too often that agents are assuming that buyers understand the whole buying process they understand the whole pre-approval process and frankly I know that that's not true and I know that there's a lot of questions out there so please again don't hesitate to drop a comment below because I'm more than happy to answer any and all questions you may have but let's jump right on into it about getting pre-approved because that's a starting point before you get to realtor.com and before you get to zillow.com getting pre-approved first is the first and foremost thing you need to be doing as a buyer so without that can't buy a house so speaking with a lender or mortgage broker hopefully you are facilitated with one through your agent or you have a relationship if not reach out to me I'll connect you with one no problem but what is the great credit score that we're all looking for well that varies a little bit for a conventional loan the ideal average credit score is 640 and above. However, with an FHA or a VA or USDA loan, you can get away with a little bit lower credit score. But for those of you who want to take advantage of the best lending mortgage programs out there with the best interest rates possible, you're going to want to have a credit score of around 740 or higher. And that's just being honest, my friends, and I don't even have that. Now, on top of that, banks are going to require you to have three lines of credit that are active, in good standing and have been active for the last two years or more. Not only that, but you wanna make sure that all these accounts are in good standing without any late payments or late fees as these could be dramatically detrimental to your credit score at the end of the day. If you do happen to have any late fees or penalties as a result of paying late, there are some great companies out there and I have a wonderful person out there that would be more than happy to take care of you if you want to address any late fees on your credit score and get it cleaned up. Dial in down below on a comment and I'm more than happy to hook you up. Now, number two is the income. Now, your income is not just about how much money you're putting in your pocket at the end of the day. While that's great, there are other things that lenders are looking at and they wanna make sure that you've had at least two consecutive years of work history with an employer at a role or in an industry. Now, on top of that, they want you to show that you have a consistent line of work that is likely to continue for at least three years or more. And why is that? Because they don't wanna take a risk on some Someone that's not going to have the income to be able to pay that monthly mortgage. Plus, they never want to be in the business of foreclosing or doing a short sale. Also, make sure while you're working to keep track of your W-2s and 1099s, especially if you're in a position where you're thinking of buying. And if you see that potential house that you want to buy, you want to make sure that these two forms, whether you're a W-2 or a 1099, are available because most mortgage brokers are going to want to at least see 
two years of this as well. Now, if at all possible, you wanna make sure your income is not decreasing from one year to the next. This is a major red flag for mortgage brokers because they are then forced to calculate your income at a lesser beneficial rate to you than say, compared to an income that is increasing from one year to the next. So make sure that you are doing your best work, making more money, you know, clocking in more hours, getting a higher pay, maybe getting that pay raise at the end of the year. So just make sure that you look as great as possible to these lenders so that you're making sure that you're getting approved and approved for the best program and best interest rate possible. Now, my friends, if you happen to be self-employed or a contract worker and you receive non-tax income, please, please, please be ultra careful with your tax deductions because the more tax deductions you take out, the more it impacts you on a negative level with your net profit because your net profit is not seen by the mortgage broker until your tax deductions have been made. So the more tax deductions you take, the more your income dwindle. So make sure that you're consulting your CPA and explain to him or her that you are having interest in buying a home this year and you want to make sure that you are doing tax deductions that will benefit you when you're going for your mortgage as opposed to negatively hurting you. Now your CPA may say, hey, bite the bullet, pay the more taxes because more income means you'll have a better opportunity to take advantage of all the mortgage plans out there and at the end of the day, have the lowest and best interest rate possible. Now the third topic for getting pre-approved is debt to income ratio. Now debts are those things that we pay on a monthly basis and they come in the form of credit cards, college loans, car payments, anything that we have a payment plan for as well, those are all debts. And those are all things that brokers and lenders are looking at to calculate whether you are a borrower worth taking the risk based on how much you're making and versus what your debt is at the end of the day. Now my friends, I hope you found tremendous value in what I just dropped on you with getting pre-approved with your mortgage broker. I'm gonna take it to another level in the next video of the series. So keep it dialed in here because we're gonna talk about the costs associated with buying a home. And this is where the tips and the hacks on the money saving is gonna really hit home. Now, keep it dialed in for the next one and I'll see you next time. Take care.